Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. This video is about solving one-step equations with addition and subtraction. Pause to check out the timestamps and feel free to jump around the video by using them in the description. At this point, you should be familiar with how to work with algebraic expressions. It turns out that whenever you set an expression equal to another expression, it becomes an equation. Let's start by looking at these equations over here. While these four equations have different variables and different numbers, including decimals and fractions, they have one specific thing in common. And that specific thing is the fact that they all have addition. Whenever you see an equation with addition, we'll always solve them with the same strategy. I'll talk more about that in just a bit. Let's start looking at this equation of x plus 3 equals 11. While the value of an algebraic expression can change depending on what the value of the variable is, we can find the specific value for x here because we have an equation. All the equations in this video will have exactly one solution. Later on, when you work with some more advanced equations, you'll see that you can have more than one answer. In this particular equation, the only value for x that makes this equation true is when it's equal to 8. No other values of x can make this true besides 8. Can you think of the only value for y that makes this equation true? If you were thinking y equals 16, good job! 16 is the only number in the world that makes this equation true. Even though these two equations have decimals and fractions, they work the same way. A little later in the video, I'll be going over some practice problems involving fractions and decimals as well. To solve any equation that has addition, you can use the subtraction property of equality. The subtraction property of equality states that if you subtract the same number from both sides of an equation, you don't change the value. Let's look at this equation of y plus 15 is equal to 33. There's only one number in the world that y can be that'll make this equation true. While the right side is 33, the left side also has to equal 33. In order for the left side to equal 33 to match the right side, y has to equal 18. The reason that makes sense is because 18 plus 15 is equal to 33. But why does that make sense? Using the subtraction property of equality, we can subtract 15 on the left side and 15 on the right side. Whenever you subtract the same value on the left side of the equal sign and the right side of the equal sign, you're using the subtraction property of equality. Combining a positive 15 with a negative 15, you get 0. On the left side, we can write y plus 0. And on the right side, we can subtract 33 minus 15 to get 18. Don't forget, there's an equal sign between these. Since any value plus 0 stays the same, we can write that y is equal to 18. Going forward, we're going to use the subtraction property of equality to solve any equation that has addition. Now let's look at some equations that have subtraction. Even though these four equations have different variables and different types of numbers, they all have subtraction. Consider this equation w minus 14 is equal to 13. Try to think of the one number in the world that makes this true. If you're thinking 27, good job, you're right. The only number in the world that makes this equation true is 27. Every other number besides 27 will create a false equation. Think about how you were able to find that value of 27. You must have worked backwards and added 13 plus 14 to get 27. You would apply that same strategy to these three equations to find the value of n, c, and a. Let's take a look at the addition property of equality together. Here we have the equation of x minus 4 is equal to 18. Pause and think about what value x could be to make this equation true. If you were thinking 22, awesome! Some value x minus 4 is equal to 18. In order to solve this equation, we would use the addition property of equality. This property states that you can add the same value to both sides of any equation. As long as you're doing the same thing to the left side of the equation as you are to the right side, you're not breaking any rules. On the left side here, notice how we have a negative 4 and a positive 4. Combining opposites always gets us 0. That means on the left side, we'll have x plus 0. On the right side, we have 18 plus 4, which is equal to 22. Don't forget about this equal sign in between them. Remember, adding 0 to anything stays the same, so x plus 0 is just x, which is equal to 22. That brings me to the third and final property that I'll be discussing in this video. This property is called the identity property of addition. I've already used it twice in two of the examples, but let me explain it a little bit more. While the identity property of multiplication states that whenever you multiply any value by 1, it stays the same, the identity property of addition states that whenever you add 0, you get the same value. Here we can see that x plus 0 is just equal to x, and y plus 0 is just equal to y. While it's a pretty straightforward property, it's important to understand how to apply it when solving one-step equations involving addition and subtraction. Let's look at this equation of x plus 12 is equal to 30. There's one number that x could be that makes this equation true. While the right side is the number 30, we need to make the left side also equal 30. Notice how we have an addition sign. 
That means that we're going to have to use the subtraction property of equality. In order to find the one value of x that makes this equation true, we need to subtract 12 from the left side and 12 from the right side. We should specifically choose to subtract 12 because it's the opposite of positive 12. Combining this positive 12 with this negative 12, we get 0. Underneath here, we can write x plus 0. And subtracting 30 minus 12, we get 18. So we can write x is equal to 18. 18 is the only value of x that will make this left side equal 30 to match the right side, which is also 30. When we subtracted 12 from both sides of the equation, we use the subtraction property of equality, or SPE for short. When we simplified the left side of x plus 0 and just wrote x, we use the identity property of addition, or IPA for short. What's great about equations is that you can always substitute the value you found back into the original equation to see if you did it correctly. For example, if you substitute this 18 in for x, 18 plus 12 does equal 30. If you found out that x was equal to any other number besides 18 and plugged it back in, you would see that it doesn't actually work. Going forward, whenever you get an answer or a solution to an equation, it's your responsibility to plug it back in or substitute it back in to the original equation to see if it actually works. Let's look at the equation of m minus 4.2 is equal to 9.9. .9. Right away, notice the subtraction sign. Because we see subtraction, we're going to use the addition property of equality to solve this equation. Well, we know the right side of the equation is equal to 9.9. .9. We need to find the one value of m that makes the left side also equal 9.9. .9. To use the addition property of equality to solve this equation, we're going to add 4.2 to both sides. The reason why we choose to add 4.2 to both sides is because it creates an opposite. The opposite of a minus 4.2 is a positive 4.2. Combining opposites together, we always get 0. On the left side, we can write m plus 0. On the right side, when we find the sum of 9.9 .9 and 4.2, we get 14.1. Here we can use the identity property of addition. Instead of writing m plus 0, we can simplify it down to just writing m. m is equal to 14.1. 14.1 .1. 14 .1 is the only value that m could be that will make the left side also equal 9.9. .9. When we added 4.2 to both sides, we used the addition property of equality. And when we simplified m plus 0 just to m, we used the identity property. Substituting in 14.1 back in for m, we can find that 14.1 minus 4.2 does indeed equal 9.9. .9. Now that we've gone over these two types of equations, as well as the three properties that we need to use, now let's try some practice problems. Grab some paper and something to write with, and let's do some math together. Here in example 1, we're going to practice solving three equations that have addition. For this first equation, we have x plus 4.3 is equal to 19.8. To solve for the value of x that makes this true, we're going to subtract 4.3 from both sides of the equation. These two numbers are opposites, so they make 0 when you combine them, so we have x plus 0. And subtracting 4.3 from 19.8, we're going to get 15.5. Then we can simplify the left side from x plus 0 down to just x. x is going to equal 15.5. This is the solution to our equation. Don't forget, it's your job to check to see if your solution actually works. Make sure you take your solution and substitute it back in to see if it works. Let's add 15.5 and 4.3 and see if it equals 19.8. 5 plus 3 is equal to 8, bring the decimal straight down. 5 plus 4 is equal to 9, and bring this 1 down. Since this does equal 19.8, we know we did this correctly. Let's try the next equation, where y plus 2 thirds is equal to 3 fourths. We'll start by using the subtraction property of equality and subtracting two-thirds from both sides of the equation. This positive two-thirds and negative two-thirds combine to make zero since they're opposites, so we can write y plus zero. And to figure out what three-fourths minus two-thirds is, we're going to have to find common denominators by using the LCD. Since four and three are relatively prime, we could just multiply the top fraction by three over three and multiply the bottom fraction by four over four. Three-fourths is equivalent to nine-twelfths, and 2 thirds is equivalent to 8 twelfths. Now that we have common denominators, we can subtract 8 twelfths from 9 twelfths and get 1 twelfth. Using the identity property of addition, we can drop the zero and just write y is equal to 1 twelfth. This will be our answer. Now let's substitute the 1 twelfth back into our equation and see if it actually works. Let's see if 1 twelfth plus 2 thirds actually equals the 3 fourths. The LCD here between 12 and 3 is going to be 12. We can multiply this fraction on the right side by 4 over 4. That means we can rewrite this as 1 12th plus 8 twelfths. 
Now that they have common denominators, we can add these two fractions together, add 1 12th and 8 twelfths to get 9 twelfths. Simplifying the numerator and denominator by their GCF of 3, we can simplify 9 twelfths down to 3 fourths. This does work. Now let's solve the equation c plus 1 sixth is equal to 7 eighths. Using the subtraction property of equality, we're going to subtract 1 sixth from the left side and subtract 1 sixth from the right side. We subtract 1 sixth from both sides because it's the opposite of positive 1 sixth. Combining these opposites together, we get 0, so we can write c plus 0 on the left side. On the right side, we have 7 eighths minus 1 sixth. The first special time that 6 and 8 meet is going to be 24. If you weren't sure about this, you could use the ladder method. 2 goes into 6 and 8, goes in 4 and 3 times. Multiplying this 2, 4, and 3 together, you're going to get 24 for the LCD. To get 24, we'll multiply by 3 and 3 for this first fraction, and to get 24, we'll multiply by 4 and 4 for the bottom fraction. 7 eighths is equivalent to 21 20 fourths, and 1 sixth is equivalent to 4 20 fourths. Subtracting 4 20 fourths from 21 20 fourths, we're going to get 17 20 fourths. Using the identity property of addition, we can drop the plus zero and just write c is equal to 17 20 fourths. The value for c that makes this equation true is 17 20 fourths. Let's check this by adding the 17 20 fourths onto the 1 sixth and see if it equals 7 eighths. The LCD between these two fractions is going to be 24, so we can leave the left fraction alone and multiply the right fraction by 4 over 4. In doing so, we still have 17 over 24, but our new fraction here is going to be 4 over 24. Adding 17 over 24 to 4 over 24, we'll get 21 24 Simplifying this by their GCF, we can divide the top and bottom both by 3, and 21 24 simplified down is equal to 7 eighths. This does work. Here in example 2, we're going to practice solving some equations that have subtraction. Since all three of these equations have subtraction, we're going to use the addition property of equality to solve them. Let's look at this first equation of w minus 24.7 is equal to 38.9. Let's find the one value for w that makes this equation true. Using the addition property of equality, we're going to add 24.7 to both sides of this equation. Specifically, we're adding 24.7 because it's the opposite of a minus 24.7. Those two combined are going to make 0, so the left side will have w plus 0. On the right side, we're going to have to add 38.9 and 24.7. Somewhere on the side, you can do your scratch work of adding 38.9 and 24.7. 9 plus 7 is 16, carry the 1, the decimal just comes straight down. 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13, carry the 1. And 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 1 is equal to 6. 38.9 plus 24.7 is equal to 63.6. Using the identity property of addition, we can drop this plus 0 and just write w is equal to 63.6. This is the only value for w that makes this equation true. Don't forget that it's your responsibility to plug in your answer to make sure it does work. Let's take the answer we got of 63.6 and substitute it back in for w and subtract 24.7. We're going to see if this is actually equal to the 38.9 on the right side of the original equation. We can't subtract 6 minus 7, so we're going to borrow. And we can't borrow from the 3 because that doesn't have enough either. The 6 can become a 5, the 3 will become a 12, and the 6 will become a 16. 16 minus 7 is going to be 9. The decimal comes straight down. 12 minus 4 is going to equal 8. And 5 minus 2 is equal to 3. This does equal 38.9. So we know our answer is correct. Now let's look at the equation of e minus 9 tenths is equal to 3 fourths. To solve for the value for e that makes this equation true, we're going to have to use the addition property of equality and add 9 tenths to both sides of this equation. We add 9 tenths because it's the opposite of a minus 9 tenths, and together they make 0, so on the left side we have e plus 0, and on the right side we need to add 3 fourths and 9 tenths together. Remember that when we add fractions, we need to have common denominators. The LCD for 4 and 10 is going to be 20. To get that common denominator, we're going to have to multiply 3 fourths by 5 over 5, and we're going to have to multiply 9 tenths by 2 over 2. 3 fourths is equivalent to 15 twentieths, and 9 tenths is equivalent to 18 twentieths. Now that these fractions have common denominators, we can actually add them. 15 twentieths plus 18 twentieths is going to equal 33 twentieths. Using the identity property of addition, we can drop the plus 0 and just write e is equal to 33 over 20. This should be our value of e that makes this equation true. 
To check our answer, let's substitute it back in. Let's take this 33 over 20 and subtract the 9 tenths, and hopefully it's going to equal 3 fourths. When subtracting fractions, we need common denominators, so we're going to multiply this 9 tenths by 2 over 2. That way our common denominators will be 20, so we'll have 33 over 20 minus 18 over 20. Subtracting 33 minus 18, we're going to get 15 over 20. And we can simplify this fraction by dividing the top and bottom by 5, where we get the simplified version of 3 fourths. This does work. Let's try one more equation where we have h minus 3 eighths is equal to 1 fifth. Since we have subtraction, we're going to use the addition property of equality and add 3 eighths to both sides of the equation. This minus 3 eighths and positive 3 eighths cancel each other out because they're opposites, and we're left with h plus 0. On the right side of the equation, we have to add 1 fifth and 3 eighths together. Since the denominators of 5 and 8 are relatively prime, we can just multiply the top fraction by 8 over 8 and multiply the bottom fraction by 5 over 5. 1 fifth is the same thing as 8 fortieths, and 3 eighths is equivalent to 15 fortieths. Now that they have common denominators, we can add these fractions. 8 fortieths plus 15 fortieths is going to equal 23 fortieths. Using the identity property of addition, we can drop the plus zero and write h is equal to 23 fortieths. If we did everything correctly, this should be the value for h that makes this equation true. Just to be sure, let's check it. Let's take our answer of 23 fortieths and substitute it in for h to see if it works. We'll do 23 over 40 minus 3 eighths, and we'll see if it equals the 1 fifth in the original equation. The LCD for 8 and 40 is going to be 40, so we can multiply this fraction on the right by 5 over 5. So we can rewrite this as 23 over 40 minus 15 over 40. Now that we have common denominators, we can subtract, and 23 minus 15 is equal to 8, so we have 8 over 40. Simplifying by their GCF, we can divide the numerator and denominator by 8, so 8 40th simplifies down to 1 fifth. This does work. And that wraps up this introductory video on one-step equations involving addition and subtraction. Keep up the good work, and I'll see you in the next one.